Hey everybody, it's Nick, it's Jay, it's Jeff. And we're going to recap the second race at High Plains Raceway outside of Denver. As we mentioned in the last recap, this may or may not be the 200th Lemons race of all time. And it depends on whether you count on weather cancellation and, you know, Australian races, and there's a lot of moving parts. You know, we just need to sit down and figure it out. And this is 200. This race was named after Judge Phil, the greatest judge in motorsport. So it turns out, and I know this for a fact from my performance art period, so you just now you haven't wrecked Venus when you're empty just because it's fun. It's like, yeah. All the recommendations on Amazon for both, both Chris and Chrissy are just nothing but sadomasochistic <laughs> torture gear. You know what? Sometimes I take my anger out of these black flag erasers by doing the old spear the pinata. <laughs> what kind of culture is it that we live in that would think of the need for a honk box? 5% of the volume of this car is that devoted is to anti-honk medicine. <laughs> Chrysler V6, I mean, with an automatic transit, plus you got the ooh as it shifts randomly, you know? Oh, for God's sake. Hella sweet, grumpy cat racing in their 1950 Dodge truck. Yeah, it's got a flathead Chrysler 6 out of an airport tug. Yeah, and for a car with a cylinder head with no moving parts in it, they had cylinder head problems. So it turns out the O'Reilly's warehouse is not that far from the track and they found a head gasket for it there. The poor bastards in the penalty box were getting smoked out all weekend by badly running vehicles. Hello Sweet was car 888 Surefire Racing. These were a bunch of dudes in a Honda Accord and they were all from Mongolia. Yeah, and there was another guy racing that weekend from Tajikistan. And they're like, hey, neighbor. Which they're not, by the way. True. Separated by China. Yeah. What'd you do? I ah, apologize, too fast. But terrible and hella sweet, Petrosexual Racing's dong-shaped external fuel gauge mounted to their roof. I'm not sure how they read this, but it had something to do with erectile dysfunction. I thought the best part about this was the driver, no idea how much fuel is in the car. The guys are like having to look as the car goes, but oh, uh, he's half flaccid, almost out of gas, bring him in. So High Plains Raceway is in the middle of nowhere. There are no hotels, there are no food places, so everybody hangs out at the track and cooks a potluck dinner. Yeah, and that was pretty hell sweet, but particularly hell sweet with Salty Thunder, they were working a punk theme for this race. Somehow in their minds, a garbage can full of roasted weenies, that was gonna be their food, and if you wanted to eat, you had to reach into the trash can, get out your weenie, and eat it. So I was not at CBGB in 1981. Is that a punk thing? It is absolutely not. No, it had nothing to do with it. Former IOE winners The Dreadnoughts and their Plymouth Arrow gave us a bribe of candy corns, but with the white parts cut off. Why? Because the car is only orange and yellow with no white on it. It matches the car. Hella sweet. Phil made a new penalty, which yeah. is the find the ignition key penalty. Yeah. Well, normally you would just have a big fishbowl of ignition keys and make the guy start his car. No, no, no. Phil custom built the coolest boombox any of us had ever seen it lit up, it played loud music, it was battery powered, and then he got an ignition switch and that's how you turn it on. And then he got 30 pounds of keys and 50 pounds of keychains, and you had to find the right key and get this thing to finally turn on. Music comes out, lights happen, woohoo, everybody starts dancing, then you can get back in your car and go back on track. The regional award went to the Gun Barrel Cobras and their 940 Volvo wagon. This car's got a Lexus V8 swap in it. One UZFE, no shit! Last time they showed up with motorcycle carbs on the top of this thing, this time they built a homemade tunnel ram air intake. They had a weird combination of a two barrel, a single barrel, and another two barrel out back. That's a five barrel? It's I ain't not a barrel. One. Definitely a five barrel. Five barrel, dear. Five barrels by Daryl. <laughs> five barrel by Daryl. <laughs> you never, okay. you guys won't believe what Daryl put in his car. <laughs> five barrel by Daryl. Five barrel. The award was aptly named after the Dr. Seuss musical instrument, the Three Nozzle Bluzer Trophy. Heroic Vicks went to Run Ralphie Run and their Porsche 944. Now, for some reason, these guys have a whole bunch of 944s in a yard, but it would have been too complicated to put a roll cage in one of those, so they bought a cheaty spec 944 instead. You'll never guess what happened next. It blew up into a giant fireball. 
Good news for them was they had this whole yard full of 944s. So they went and got a flatbed truck, brought one of them back to the track to try to use the parts from that car to get the Burt car back up and running. Well, they never exactly did. The farthest they got was to get it to crank, but relative to what everybody else did this weekend, that was heroic. Now, the I Got Screwed trophy went to dropped packet. With teams, sometimes they're really organized and they really have it together, and other times it turns out later they were just lucky all these years. Drop yeah. Packet has won a lot of HPR races, probably more than any other team, so we assume that they really had it together. Turns out that was not a safe assumption. They brought three cars ultimately to this race, and none of them worked. They started with their trusty Integra, which was kind of barely running. So, oh, wait, uh, we got a fallback. We got this brilliant Mitsubishi. They went and they got the Mitsubishi. It didn't run at all. Oh, no, wait, we're so organized. We also have a spec Miata. They go they get the spec Miata, they bring it. Bolting cage, totally illegal. This car is not gonna run. Now they're back to the Integra, but there's a twist. Yeah, Judge Phil just completed an engine swap on his street Honda Civic. He took out the original engine, D15 B7, no shit, and installed an Integra motor, V18 C1, no shit. So he had the original motor sitting in a pile with other swap parts on his garage floor, and he said before the race, if anybody needs a Honda motor, I have delineated this pile with lemons duct tape, and you must go to my house and you must take it all, all of it. So drop packet, their Integra was blown up. They figured, well, even though it's an old Civic motor, we're gonna go get it. They had to coordinate with Phil's wife to open the garage door. They went down and they got it. They brought it back. Then they gave it to their team mechanic. And he said, even though this is technically the same type of engine from the same company, it is completely different and will not work at all. And they gave up and they got screwed. Judge's choice went to Magically Delicious and their AMC Gremlin. This car is actually not terrible. It's, it's run around for years, and it's almost been too good for awards in the past. You know, it's even got a 4-liter Jeep motor in it. 1,100-pound boat anchor full of casting voids. No shit! And it ran well, and they had a good Lucky Charms theme, so kudos. We always like Lucky Charms. Magically delicious. Organizer's choice went to the appropriately named Why Would You Do That Racing? Now, they have a Chevette. They put a Volvo B23 motor in it, which is normally, normally aspirated, but they decided they were going to turbo it. Now, you can actually get a Volvo turbo motor made, but no, no, they had to do this themselves. Yeah, and thus creating a homemade Callaway vet. Go right back, Now, that's all a bad idea. The guy spent several years building it and actually built it pretty well, all things considered. Needless to say, the turbo exploded spectacularly. Blanked that thing off, they ran it normally aspirated for the rest of the weekend, and it ran poorly, but it ran. Index of effluency was well deserved. It went to Salty Thunder Racing and their two Fiero effort. These guys have been around for years. They've had a bunch of great themes during that time. And this time, inexplicably, one of the two Fieros was running in the top five all weekend with a stock drivetrain. They finished in third. It was incredible. They had a great punk theme. Slam dunk index of effluency. Here's Lemons in a Nutshell. Hey, wait. Hey, Phil. Yeah. What was in the pinata? Uh, it was two-day-old chicken nug nuggets that I'm now donating to the feral cats directly from my mouth. Yeah, that's, that's not on that interview. I think this is, this is pretty good. Oh my god, that is Ric Flair. <laughs> <laughs> He said, well, I was driving, and I saw a sparkly glitter, and I said, well, that's weird. So I put, I put my, my hand, hand to it. it, and I brought it to my uh, face to smell it, and I, oh, man, that smelled like fire. That smells <laughs> like gas. That's gas. That's gas. <laughs> oh, my God. And then, and then the blowtorch of flames were coming through the firewall, so then I thought, maybe I should stop. <laughs> what did they tell me in the rookie meeting? And then I stopped. You know, I got a whole yard full of Porsche 944s, and I never could have seen something like this happen. <laughs>